welcome to Taking Control, the ADHD podcast on Rashpixel.fm. I'm Pete Wright, and right over there, <laughs> convalescing, is Nikki Kinzer. I know. Thank God this is your show today. <laughs> I'm oh, so man. sorry you're sick. It makes I me am. so sad. Happened. It started with my son, and then my daughter, and then Mama got it. Oh, that's so terrible. Yeah, it's not. What fun. do you do? What do you do to take care of yourself when you're sick? Well, when we're done recording, I'm going to bed and I'm going to sleep. <laughs> okay, that's good. I slept. I slept yesterday. I took two long naps. So mm. yeah, I I, I'm the opposite of my children because they don't like to sleep. They fight it. We'll be like, oh no, if you're not feeling well, take a nap. And they're like, no, no, no. And I'm like, oh, I'm all over that. Well, my problem with that is I'm, I'm not very good at naps. And so I either, it takes me a long time to get to sleep or I go to sleep so hard that I can't wake up functionally. So I can't yeah. just sleep for a short period of time. Uh, and that's not good for, no, you know, know. healing, it, it, interacting. Great for healing, it's, but it's, uh, not good for interacting with the world. Well, and I'm just, yeah, I'm unmotivated. Like yeah. I, I'm not feeling well. It's cloudy. It's rainy. It's Friday because we record, we're recording this on Friday yeah. right now, even yeah. though you guys are listening to it on a Tuesday, Tuesday or yeah. any other day that you might be yes, listening right. to it. But yeah, I'm really just like, I just want to go crawl and go to sleep. Oh, you poor thing. Well, so we'll you're, you're going to gonna be on, you're, yeah. you're the star of the show. Today. Well, I, I hope I'll make it a little <laughs> bit easy on you, uh, at least in the bottom end of the show. So here, here we go. We, we're talking about, oh, Nikki, I'm, I was a mess last night. I was a Uh-oh. mess. I got so buried in medical literature. Literature and journal articles on, oh, on no rabbit hole. Jesus. I did on ADHD and creativity, and and so we're going to be talking a little bit about that today. Before we dig in, head over to Take Control ADHD. You know the drill. Get to know the show a little bit better. You can listen right there on the website or subscribe to our mailing list right there on the homepage, and you'll get an email every time a new episode comes out each week. You can connect with us on Twitter and Facebook at Take Control ADHD or call us 503-664-4ADD and get your voice, your thoughts right here on this very show. Uh, and don't forget, head over, when you go to the website, make sure to t- take a look at uh, Nikki's online programs, Organizing Your Space Your Way, still available. It's up there. It is great. You should check it out. We've got new content coming soon. Uh, it is on your own pace, but it is guided, and that's the important part. It, it won't let you wander off into the weeds. It will tell you what to do <laughs> when you're ready to do it. So uh, that's what you need to do, Organizing Your Space Your Way at TakeControlADHD.com. And you can organize your weeds if you'd like. You could organize your weeds your way. Because it's a system, Organizing yeah. your weeds your Absolutely. way. That is actually, it was a follow-up that, you know, <laughs> I thought we were going to keep secret, but uh, apparently it's out there now. It's there. Uh, we have a little bit of follow-up before we dig in. Uh, we got, uh, what did we get? We got two emails to talk about? Yeah, yeah, one. yep. The, the first one, uh, the first one, thanks Nikki and Pete. I also thought about ways to capture the ideas without emailing widely. Widely. Now, this was in response to our uh, impulsivity conversation last week. Last week, yes. right. Okay. I like the idea of posting in a private journal, but could see how that might be awkward in the workplace, depending on technology policies. What if the listener emailed his or her private email accounts with the ideas and tagged the subject line to make them easy to retrieve later. Also, another idea is if the listener doesn't already have spell check enabled on email, if that was enabled before the email goes out, like can be done in Outlook, maybe that could also be a mental reminder to review the email for appropriateness before it goes out. Oh, I like two things about that. Well, how did that one hit you? I really like it because the the, uh, spell check is the little red lines, right? So it's almost like a red flag. Yeah, right. Is what she's saying. It's It's a visual of, hey, stop. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, and I think that one, I, I'm not entirely sure how that works anymore, uh, because it's just always in the background. But uh, it used to be when you would, when you would, in Outlook, I think she's talking about, and somebody's going to, I don't use Outlook day to day, so somebody's going to have to check me on this. But I think when you hit send, it's like shift F7 or F7, something to send an email in Outlook, uh, it would trigger spell check to run and a window would pop up. If you oh, okay. have any misspellings. And so right. um, it would check your spelling before you send it. Now, it's, you know, for for me, it, it's always checking spelling. There's no trigger that pops up. And if I choose not to fix the underlined red lines, it just sends. So I'm not entirely sure how universal that trick is, but I like it a lot. Mm-hmm. Uh, it's just very dependent on what email clients you use. The other thing is, um, you know, I really like the idea of just uh, setting up an email to quickly email your thoughts and reminders to your private account 
Um, yeah. You yes. know, that's just an easy way to to optimize for acquisition, idea acquisition, uh, with the little uh, tagline in the subject to let you search for it later. That's a great idea. Mm-hmm. Um, the, the other, I, I, was this a separate email or is this the same person writing? No, this is a separate okay, email. Separate email to me. Pete, can you help me? I need to, uh, hallelujah. Oh, boy. Come in the tent. I need to find an app or website that allows me to use a calendar and a to-do list in one place. For example, I can see my schedule along with those things I need to do, but there's also a section for future goals and or projects. Currently, I'm using a book and paper along with a to-do list app, but I'm sure you know of some better solutions. Thanks, Anne. Anne, have you ever come to the right place? <laughs> I, You know, it, it's it's a little bit tricky because all of these tools, you know, handle the bundling of features differently. For example, uh, you know, on the Mac, uh, Calendar and uh, Calendar used to have Reminders built into it. Now Reminders is a separate app that comes with the OS. So you'd have Reminders and Calendar as separate apps side by side. You can drag things between them, uh, but that ends up being a little bit cumbersome if you're not used to it. Again, it's that separate app thing. Uh, Fantastical 2 is an app that I use for my calendar. It also ha- is builds in syncing to the Reminders to the to-do list service. Uh, so you can have those open in the same place. But really, the big dog in this particular fight is, we've already mentioned it, Microsoft Outlook. Believe it or not, Microsoft Outlook uh, is the tool. It's kind of the go-to standard for uh, answering this question. It builds in your email, your contacts, your calendars, and your to-dos, and all of these functions. They all interoperate uh, quite seamlessly. If you haven't explored it, particularly for Android and iOS, uh, you definitely should. It works with uh, Google uh, email accounts, uh, iCloud email accounts obviously outlook.com email accounts and if you're if you aren't using outlook in business um you, this, it, it was at least for a very long time the gold standard for for uh, business applications and everybody got it when you when you get into a, to work in the morning you open outlook it's just where everything's yeah. are it's optimized for businesses um you know google apps has has nibbled into that market i still think outlook is is a big one but if you're if you're using it at work and you haven't considered using it for your personal life you might want to give it a shot uh i don't use it personally but i did use it on ios on my ipad and iphone for a long time um, because the email client on mobile in Microsoft Outlook is awesome. It is awesome, awesome uh, just for emailing. Now, for me, I, I use a lot of uh, external services, third-party services that I like to tie into my email. So I use an app called AirMail app on iOS, which uh, allows me to do really quick, like, flick motions to send my emails to other services like Evernote and and to do app. So uh, I don't use it personally anymore, but I really like it. And it does answer your question and it ties into your calendar and your to do list. So check those out. Microsoft Outlook. There you go. There you go. Links in the show notes to all the different versions. Pete helped her. Yay. There you go. (laughs) Okay. So let me tell you why I'm a hot mess today. Oh, dear. You know, I was reading this thing. You know, Facebook. Ah, stupid Facebook. <laughs> yes. So I get on Facebook and I, I'm, I'm just clicking around and, and you know, because we truck in the ADHD circles, me less than you, but it still it pops <laughs> up. Facebook thinks that I'm, I'm going to like everything related to ADHD. Like I need to be reminded that I live with ADHD every day, right? Mm-hmm. Um, and yet, so it's reminding me. And so I get one of these memes that comes up about creativity and ADHD that says it, it names a couple of people in the universe that that have had ADHD and happen to be wildly creative people, very famous painters or technologists or whatever. Oh, he had ADHD. Therefore, so the meme says, people with ADHD must be more creative than normos, right? And and so it makes this this really false argument um, that uh, it doesn't it, it it just doesn't sit right with me. That says. If you have ADHD, you are you are sitting on a geyser of untapped creative potential. Uh, and I so, had to just tell you something that's so funny, ironic that you actually brought this up because I had um, someone tell me we were talking about um, I don't even remember what we were talking about. It must have been work or related or something, but uh, she actually told me she didn't feel very creative. Yeah, and she has ADHD. Yeah, so I don't I don't know. Well, so I started looking through. So I, I went over yeah. to Google, Google Scholar. And, and if you haven't waded into the waters of Google Scholar, oh, they're deep waters. 
<laughs> uh, this is where all the medical journals, Google uh, in, ingests all the medical journals that are current of the day. So you can search for topics like this and you can start reading through topics uh, uh, like this based on keyword searches. And if you're pretty good at your Boolean search terms, you can really dive in as an academic and get a lot of great information. So there I am looking on creativity and ADHD in adults. And uh, as it turns out, I, I would say a, a qualified uh, so conditional statement that the medical community has largely agreed there is no consensus that people with ADHD are more or less creative than the non-ADHD population. And while it's really, really fun to put inspirational pictures with quotes about ADHD and creativity on them on Facebook, that is not, they, they aren't based in science. That is the consensus of the medical community based on my hours and hours of digging into this last night. The real trick is, is, hinges on this word neurodiversity. Neurodiversity, it was actually a, a term that was new to me. I, I'm surprised that I haven't, I hadn't heard it before last night. But neurodiversity, according to Wikipedia, knower of all things, in yes. quotes, <laughs> neurodiversity is an approach to learning and disability that suggests that diverse neurological conditions appear as a result of normal variations in the human genome. This portmanteau of neurological and diversity originated in the late 1990s as a challenge to prevailing views of neurological diversity as inherently pathological, instead asserting that neurological differences should be recognized and respected as a social category on par with gender, ethnicity, sexual orientation, or disability status. That's neurodiversity. It says that ADHD as a spectrum disorder is just the way we're wired. It's not better or worse than those who don't deal with any of the ADHD bucket of symptoms. It just is what it is. Now, I said last week that I'm continually surprised each week we do this show at how ADHD manifests in us as people who live with it uh, in such wildly different ways, right? In one person, mm -hmm. you end up with severe hyperactivity, can't sit still. In the next person, you have severe lethargy to the point of theta bursts, which cause them to mimic narcolepsy. They just fall asleep. That's ADHD. In one person, you have hyperfocus. In another, you have chronic inattention. In one person, you have impulsivity. In another, you have chronic inactivity. These are all ADHD, and it blows me away that from one day to the next, one person to the next, we're all dealing with the same bucket of symptoms. Thus is the spectrum disorder. It's crazy. So this combination of symptoms, it's as unique as we are as individuals. So even though the medical community says no, that ADHD and creativity uh, is it's not a direct connection, there is a lot of great work going on in how to use creativity to help adjust to the symptoms of ADHD, right? right? So just because you're not naturally more creative, you can do things that typically fall into the category of the arts, the category of creativity, and uh, see how that impacts your ADHD. For some, it's incredibly relaxing. For some, it's incredibly stimulating. And just like this spectrum of effects that ADHD has on you throughout the day, the spectrum of your personal, individual, unique, shiny snowflake response to these activities may be just as uh, impactful to you. So that's what I want to talk about because it's a digital episode. I want to talk about my very favorite apps that I turn to when I want to create, even though I'm generally pretty crappy at it. What do you think about that? That sounds good. That's my, that's my pitch for today. Here we go. Are you ready? I'm ready. I'm starting, starting with paint and color. Paint that's fun. And color. Yes, it yes. is. You know what? So this is the, the bottom of the barrel, paint and color. One of the most surprising discoveries I had this year is this advent of adult coloring books. Have you heard oh, of this thing? Well, this is big. This adult coloring book got really big. <laughs> like, all of a sudden, they're everywhere. They're everywhere. They're yes. everywhere. And I'm telling you, don't dismiss the adult coloring books. It's weird. It is a weird experience when you realize <laughs> that you have just on a gag, right? Somebody says, oh, are you trying an adult coloring book? <laughs> and then you pick it up and you start and you're like, gosh, 15 minutes later, I just really had a good time coloring this stupid flower. <laughs> like, it's fascinating. So uh, I have two apps to recommend for adult coloring books. And I shouldn't say adult. Anybody can color, right? It's not like they're, right. they're adult, like it's pornographic coloring <laughs> exactly. books. That would be insane. Uh, I'm sure that exists too, but that's not what I'm talking about. For iOS uh, specifically... <laughs> 
whole different show. Uh, uh, iOS, particularly with Apple Pencil, if you if you have invested in the the latest tools, there's an app called Pigment, uh, which is fantastic. It is just delightful. It's unfortunately it's a subscription service, but you get a bunch of free uh, uh, free things. They're like animals and jungle creatures and flowers and just like stencils that look like stained glass. And the tool is really great. You you select your color, you mix your color, you can color in, you zoom in and color very, very fine uh, spots. It's just delightful. And when I'm feeling really stressed out and I want to, I, I just know I need to slow down, I can open up one of these coloring books and have a, and, and just really give myself a 15 minute brain break. Mm-hmm. For Android Colorfy, uh, it looks like the um, uh, the analog to pigment uh, on Android, and uh, it, again, it's um, it does it looks almost identical to pigment. So if you're if you are familiar with either or both, you are familiar with the other. Uh, next is uh, is this idea behind sketch diagramming and watercolor. Uh, two apps to recommend here. Uh, the first is Paper by Fifty Three. That's the name of the company, 53. Uh, This is an iOS, uh, iPad, and iPhone-only app, and it lets you do more than just coloring, right? So it's not, there are no, there's nothing to color, uh, but it gives you all the drawing and painting tools that you need. The other thing that they built into this is some really robust freehand sketching tools. So you open up your, your, uh, you open up a, a blank sheet, and if you draw kind of a rough square, it'll automatically f- sharpen all the edges and corners and make a square. If you do a circle, it'll make a perfect circle. If you do a triangle, it'll make a perfect triangle. If you connect, you draw a quick sketch arrow from a square to a triangle, it'll create a, a real arrow from a triangle. To a, from the triangle to the square. So it allows you to do some really quick kind of back of the napkin uh, diagramming and then painting um, that, that ends up being really neat. And you start seeing, like when you open the app for the first time, it, you start seeing that a lot of, of writers and publishers use paper to create their own web graphics. So you'll be reading a blog post and somebody has something to demonstrate. They'll do it in paper, export it as a JPEG and put it up on the website. So the style that paper allows you to create will start to look very familiar once you've you've played with it a little bit. The cool. the other app uh, for Android, this is actually an Android and iOS uh, app, is Bamboo Paper, or uh, which is uh, kind of confusing because they're both named Paper, one by 53, one by Bamboo. Bamboo may be familiar to you. These guys are the uh, drawing tablet people. This is by Wacom. And so anytime you see anybody doing a, um, like with a, a pen input device on their computer, you're doing high end photo retouching or 3d graphics or, you know, animation on one of the behind the scenes, like Pixar thing, they're using a product by Wacom and, uh, uh, bamboo paper is another tool that lets you do really quick sketches, very high quality brushes, and again, very soothing uh, to do these little sketches. So that's uh, Bamboo Paper is one definitely to check out. On the high-end scale uh, for real fine art, I mean, you see people who are doing incredible fine art on these particular tools. The first one, the one I love the most is Procreate. Uh, This is on iOS. This gives you the full gamut of watercolors, pastels, chalks, fine pens, whatever kind of brush tip you want, you can find it in Procreate. It allows you, it gives you a bunch of, it gives you full layer access. So you could, uh, and this is what I do all the time, just for, for when I'm looking to draw, 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 meditate, draw to tape. Uh, I, I will. Is that Im- a real term? It is now. I'm committing <laughs> That's to right. it. Uh, I'll import a photo that I have taken and I will outline and color it like a comic uh, colorist, right? Oh, that's neat. And it, that's and then you you hide the photo layer, and you end up seeing just it looks like you're a full on illustrator. It looks like you're, and you're yeah, all you're doing is cool. tracing. It's yeah. really really fun, and uh, okay. and and it's great to do while you're just you turn on the TV and you're watching something stupid, and and that's kind of what you're doing in the background. It keeps your mind going. Uh, the alternative for Android uh, is uh, Sketchbook by Autodesk. Uh, it's another very high end kind of fine art tool. So those two are great. Sketchbook is also. Uh, available on ios but it's that's the android port Uh, procreate is not available on android okay last and this is something in the fine art category that i don't do uh very well Uh, this is uh penmanship what do you think about that penmanship and calligraphy 
I, well, I like it because I, I took a calligraphy class in high school and I really enjoyed it. Really fun. Uh, mm-hmm. And I did too. It was, and, and I had a kit and my mom got me a calligraphy kit. It had the ink and the, you know, you, it had the pen that you take yep. apart, right? And have to clean. It was the dip, the dip calligraphy pen. Well, calligraphy art for iOS, if you have a stylus, so it trains you on the tablet how to do the strokes. It doesn't really help because, uh, help you um, internalize, I don't think, the act of doing calligraphy until you go out and get a real calligraphy pen and parchment so you can actually feel, because so much of that is about the feel of of how right. the, you're interacting with the paper. So this just lets you know, here is a stroke order of how to do these these more com- complex sort of artistic penmanship. I really enjoy it. Um, and, and if you want to play with a, a similar tool, but for... Um, for brush design, uh, m- much more of, a, of kind of an Asian style, uh, Zen Brush Two is an is an app that um, allows you to do that. You choose a style of paintbrush, and then you walk through. You can you can do beautiful sort of parchment Asian style parchment designs, like you know trees. And if you're you know if you happen to speak or write um, an Asian language, it's it's really great. It makes you look completely authentic. It's, <laughs> it's really fun and and That's cool. quite meditative. Okay, yeah. music. Let's talk about music. Music. I this is another one I really enjoy, and I, I do have a bit of a music background, so I I kind of have a bent for this stuff. I recognize it's bias, and and so I I tell you that up front that I I find this really fun to play with. I encourage you to do the same, just to see if you have a a musical vein in your body that maybe you you can unleash through some creative experimentation. The first is GarageBand. For iOS, that's kind of the go-to uh, just because it ships for free when you get a new iPhone or iPad. It's it's there for you, but it is a deceivingly robust application. Um, you can go in. This is I, I usually start with a drum machine. You can create wildly complex kind of EDM trance, uh, drum patterns, rock and roll patterns, and then you start layering these smart instruments on top of it, and before you know it, you've created a band, and it doesn't even have to be all that complex or competent of a a structure you're making music and the act of putting your fingers on the screen and plucking that virtual guitar and hearing that guitar in your head is uh, enormously satisfying they have all the chord structures worked out so you don't have to think about the music that you you know your lack of music experience you just start strumming and see what sounds good and you can record it and play it back and share it it's really really fun for android the alternative is stage light that seems to be the go to i haven't tested it myself but that's definitely one to look at show notes in uh links in the show notes and finally this is one I could spend hours on, and I, I don't do this one that often because I found myself getting really lost. Um, <laughs> so you, you ever you ever been to a, a club with a great DJ? Are you a club club scene person yourself, Nikki? You do a lot of clubbing? a long time. Do I do a lot of clubbing? <laughs> well, oh, Pete. You know, you know okay. So <laughs> recognizing, our, recognizing our age... Yes. Uh, I I don't I don't do a lot of clubbing either. But no, last time no, I, I did, <laughs> the the best DJs always had these tricked out uh, turntables, right? They have the, right, they have the yes. two turntables and boxes the ones and I boxes see in the of movies. Yeah, yes, right. That's those so are true. The, those are the ones. <laughs> the movies. Well, and so this is a, a, a app available for iOS or Android from Algorithm called DJ Two, and it gives you on screen your two turntables, and you can select from your music library and mix your own. Um, your own DJ mix. And that includes the house beats you can put underneath it. It'll, it'll, um, uh, normalize, uh, the rhythms, the beats of the song so that they pair nicely with one another. You can switch back and forth between, you know, your, um, Oh, that it's fine for um, teenagers oh, too. Yeah. I would think, and people that are really into music. I can totally see my son getting into oh, that. Oh yes. Yeah. What I what I really like about this is that it doesn't take very long to get in there and get into the groove of it, like to understand the very basics of how this works. But if you put in more time, you can, uh, you know, you can run the club if you want. Like it has some very sophisticated tools that these DJs have started to adopt. And I know that's algorithms. um, That's their intention is to make this a tool that is used in clubs that can, so you can completely digitize your, your DJ workflow. And it's, it's all right in there. All your music is, is right in there. So it's, it's a great, great app, uh, and, and it's worth checking out iOS and Android. Okay, last, and then I'm going to shut up. <laughs> no, you have two more. Well, I'd say the whole section here is oh, okay. photography. 
photography, videography. Now, we, we, if, if you have a cell phone, you got a camera, largely. Right. Although I did see a, a guy was in the AT&T store the other day, and I saw a guy with a phone without a camera. Very old, old flip phone. And he was really reluctant to give it up, but it wasn't actually making calls anymore. And he was very frustrated that he could power it on, but it wouldn't make calls. And the poor AT&T guy is like, man, your phone's dead. You got to give it up. But it was one of those cold, dead hand moments. I felt I felt bad for the guy. Anyhow, oh, yeah. you get a new phone, you got a new camera. And uh, just taking pictures is one thing. If you enjoy taking pictures, take take pictures, play with the pictures. But I want to call out specifically two features of the latest cameras that you need to play with because they're fantastic. One is slow motion and the other is time lapse. Now, I'm uh, I'm currently shooting on an iPhone 7 Plus, which this is this is um so it I think it I think they introduced the the slow motion like two two maybe three generations ago the, and and so um you can set your camera to record very very slowly. So either 120 or 240 frames per second that when played back at normal speed makes things really, really slow. And I found myself the other day, I was, I was really fritzed out. I was frustrated. I had a, a, a client that was frustrating me, and, and I needed to chill out. I went in to pour myself an iced coffee. And so I poured the coffee, and I got it all dressed. I put the ice in it, and then I needed to put the, the cream in it, the half and half. So I poured the half and half, and it was so gorgeous watching it like go down there, the waves of the, the cream oh, right, yeah. mixing mm-hmm. with through the ice and the coffee that I, I, the next time I did it, I brought my camera out. I set it to the super slow motion, and I, I just leaned it up against a coffee mug, and I hit record and poured that cream in, and it has become like the most trance-like experience. It, it lasts like three minutes this this experience of just pouring cream into iced coffee, uh, but I could watch it all day long on a loop. It is so meditative. So I think exploring how what life looks like around you in slow motion can be really fun. So definitely do that. The other is time lapse, and that of course is doing the uh, going the other way when you take the world around you and speed it up so you can see what things look like uh, when they uh, time is compressed. I start. I did this. We have a coffee maker with a glass carafe, so you can you can watch the water go down. And of course, when you're just brewing coffee over 15 minutes, it goes down super slowly. I actually set up the time lapse, watching my coffee maker brew coffee. It's fascinating the way yes. the water comes down. Then it stops for a little bit. Apparently, there's something blooming in there, and then it goes down a little bit more, and then blooms some more. I I loved that. So I've been taking time lapse of of the sky over my head, of the way the flowers turn. Uh, over the course of a sunny afternoon. Uh, these are all things that are just right around you. So kind of leverage that. Take a break. Go outside. Set up your camera. You have it already in your pocket and uh, and see what you can do with those uh, tools. My uh, husband did it with the sunset um, at the beach. And so he did the little time lapse thing so we could see the sunset. It mm-hmm. was really cool. It is really cool. I yeah. strongly recommend it. I There are two apps that I use. Um Occasionally, mostly I just use the built-in apps in the in the camera, but there aren't that many settings. So there are a lot of apps that let you do this. The, the easiest go-to one comes from uh, is Hyperlapse, and that comes from uh, from Instagram, which of course comes from Facebook now, uh, and that's available for iOS. Hyperlapse is is a great tool not just for doing these kind of time lapse, but also for just um, for just giving you really really smooth video. It has some some interesting kind of motion. Uh, stabilization built in so you can you can watch something at very fast motion or you can watch it at normal speed and it's just super smooth so that's very cool the other is Lapsit on Android, uh, which is seems to be the the go to third party very full featured app for doing time lapse photography. Google has also come up with some uh, some fantastic tools in their own uh, photo application. So if you're um, either iOS or Android user, you should check out Motion Photos and and uh, see how that works for you as well from Google. Last, I promise, you know, you could just go out and buy paper and pens and paintbrushes and adult <laughs> adult and adult coloring, coloring books, books and sketchbooks <laughs> and all those yes. things. you could you really could just go to go to your uh, your local uh, art supply store and and do all this stuff but it's a digital episode so these are my favorite tools and i hope some of them uh help you to chill out I with art it. therapy yeah and what did you call it uh you had a new word neurodiversity 
No, well, that, but the, the meditative, you said... Oh, draw-tative? Dr- draw-tative. If you're draw-tating. Yes. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. We just make stuff up we here. We just make stuff up left yeah. and right. You just yeah. have to commit. It'll stick. It'll I love stick. it. I think it's great. Good. Well, I hope Good that idea. helps, folks. There you go. Thank you, everybody, for putting up with me yet again as Nikki sits mostly silently and nurses her ailing self. That's right. <laughs> this fine week. This has been a fun digital episode, super fun reading all that research. So I, I hope I was able to distill at least some of these concept, concepts down. And uh, next week, uh, Nikki's driving again. So there you yep. go. Thanks, everybody. There you on go. Be- thank on behalf you, of, Pete. Thank you. On behalf of the good <laughs> Nikki Kinzer, I'm Pete Wright. We'll catch you next week on Taking Control, the ADHD podcast. 